some of the biggest learning that I've had is by just getting in the paddock and, and looking at things and observing what's happening. Then we can catch changes and, and learn and identify why, what's caused that and that, and then we all learn and grow. I encourage people before we get into this, get a white piece of paper, take a photo of your soil against that, look at the colour of the soil, look at the structure, do some infiltration tests, things like that. Plant cover crops, come back in a year or two to mark, flag that spot. We got somewhere to go back and measure because it's really exciting and motivating when we do start to see little things like colour changes and we see soil structure improving and infiltration improving and I've seen it many, many times on our own farm and many other farms around. I know these things can happen, but it's good to have a, a measurement from the start to, to help track that. Another couple of tools I really think every farmer should have and getting a shovel out there, looking at soil structure, actually looking, have we got any worms? When I first started doing this 15 or more years ago, we couldn't find one worm in our paddock, but they're in the garden through the fence in the same soil. Soil's the same, management's different. Now we find worms everywhere. Then we can start thinking, how do we grow worms? We can know how to grow cattle, we know how to grow crops. We've got to feed the worms and we feed them you know, livestock manure, diversity to roots, organic matter, you know, but we can start a shovel as a way we can look to, to see and measure these things. A penetrometer is another one um, we use a lot. Um, we can detect hard pans and moisture content. Um, and as we've put more tap-rooted plants like this in, we can get around and start pushing the penetrometer into the handles. Also important to do some of these tests the same time of the year, the same month of the year when our moisture and things are similar, then we've got similar conditions to measure against. So these are all cool things because as we start to see um, these changes, we can, we can know, you know if we're going on the right path or not. We're in a land here in Australia where we're in extreme. We're either in drought or flood. And if we have our soil structure poor, we have bigger swings to drought and flood. But if we can improve our soil structure and resilience, we buffer those environmental extremes that we get, even frost events. We've seen full pea crops, monoculture peas, in a minus three, you know, full heavy frost, not lose one flower and set pods and whole grain. Where other pea crops in, in you know, the close vicinity all got frosted out. But we, we test those plants, we've got higher sugars in the plant, which makes them more resilient to frost. You know, we can increase this through, you know, by all these methods, this system. And then, you know, we have essentially less risk on the table. With frost, heat, moisture, all those things buffer out when we get our soil improved. We set goals, personal goals on ourselves, business goals. Why not set soil health goals and write down, you know, this is where my soil's at now in terms of structure and carbon content, and I want it to be here. And I know when I write those things down and be accountable for that, we've got a greater chance of making that happen. <laughs>